Good morning. morning. Well, it's starting to come, isn't it? (laughs) We're kind of like getting ready for the big battle in the trench, ready for it to happen. But we we can't complain. We got up so well this winter, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. How many inches have I heard? A lot? 16? Wow, yeah. But uh, it's a dry snow, right? So, So it won't matter all that much. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, God does have a sense of humor in many, in many respects. And yes, we wait on the cusp of the snowstorm, but we also do so uh, celebrating Palm Sunday, uh, this week which we label as holy. And it is only holy not because of who we are or what we've done, but because of what God has given to us through the gift of Jesus Christ. It all begins today as we wave the palm branches and yell and shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You're joining me back there, mister, a little bit later on. And, uh, and then, of course, we transition to the passion of our Lord. It begins today and we continue throughout the week. A couple of a radio, uh, or a co- radio, a couple of announcements before we continue our worship in earnest and get the kids lined up there as a part of the worship service processing in a little bit later on. Our radio broadcast this morning is sponsored by Doris Lafreniere in loving memory of her husband, Vern. So thank you, Doris. We know that you're listening. Best wishes to Audrey Hammer, Oz Schock, Bonnie Mangseth, and Marlene Anderson celebrating their birthdays this upcoming week. Audrey and Oz on Monday, Bonnie on Tuesday, and Marlene on Saturday. Uh, it is our uh, sad, uh, my sad duty to announce to you that Jim Hopped, whose birthday was coming up, has passed away, and uh, his funeral will be, uh, arrangements for his funeral will be a little bit later. We remember his family in our thoughts and prayers the, these days. We also extend and continue to extend Christian sympathy to Phyllis Fox and her family upon the death of her husband and our great brother in the faith, Fred. Fred uh, uh, passed away on March 17th. His, his uh, celebration of life, his memorial service was yesterday, and of course that, those beautiful flowers over there Uh, are in remembrance of Fred, and uh, we remember him in our thoughts and prayers, together with the Davidson family as well, as uh, they lost their great matriarch, Judith Davidson, who passed away on March 16th. Uh, Ozzy's birthday, speaking of which, uh, please do stick around. The snow will wait, okay? Uh, Please do stick around as uh, we have an ice cream celebration, ice cream cake, Uh, for Ozzy's 85th birthday, so uh, come downstairs for that immediately after the worship service. And it goes without saying, on account of the impending snow-nami, there will be no quilting for tomorrow as well. Uh, Probably a good, good thing to do. Yeah. Let us continue our worship in earnest with the confession and the forgiveness, uh, something that should be done on a day, on a Sunday, on a week, as, as we uh, gather here for worship. And immediately after the confession and the absolution, if uh, we could just as, as deftly, as uh, quickly, as swiftly as possible, get uh, our children at the back of the church, and we will continue the uh, service with the processional gospel. Please rise. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated, please. And if we could uh, have the children, if you would come towards the back, if the children need somebody else to accompany them to uh, be successful in processing down. Just a word from the choir, or to the choir, we didn't really have a rehearsal time, but I think you know what to do. Half of yous will come over here and break off over, over on to my left. The other half will come over here to the right. We process around our beautiful sanctuary area. And uh, if you would like to put the palm that you have in your hand, if you would like to distribute it right over here in the front to uh, honor our Lord as he comes into Jerusalem, that would be a very appropriate thing to do as well. So, please rise. Children, if you could come to the back. Good question. Yeah, he does steal the show. <clears throat> Adorable, is he not? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were standing and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. We praise you, O God, for the redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you haven't already done so, please turn to page 344, hymn number 344, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please join me with the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Hey guys, come on over here. Come on over here, just a little bit. Walk over here. Why did, why did we do this? What are these? Those are leaves? Yeah, leaves. What, what, these are known as palm branches. Yeah? And does anybody know the story of why this was done? Anybody? I'll briefly tell it if nobody else wants to. Palm branches are wonderful things. Palm branches always have the, uh, remind us of kings and important people. You've probably seen this. I'll bet you have. Maybe you've seen it in a cartoon or something or some type of a, a picture or portrayal where a king will be surrounded in all of his majesty, or a queen for that matter, in all of her majesty, and there's people fanning them with a palm branch. Has anybody ever seen that? Yeah, I'll bet you have. I'll bet you have. And the palm branch is meant to be a symbol that says, this person's important. Hmm? This is the one we honor. This is the one we love. Hmm? Palm branches can often be looked upon as like flags in a way as well. A flag represents something uh, like a country, or it represents something of, uh, uh, that people want to kind of rally themselves around. I'm going to pull something else here out of my pocket to kind of talk about Palm Sunday. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. This is a, 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 a Homer Hanky. Hmm? Baseball's just around the corner. Uh, this one has a championship drive of the Minnesota Twins. Anybody know anything about the Minnesota Twins? Yeah? Huh? I'll bet you do. Yeah, right? And uh, I, I have this in my pocket because yesterday we had the funeral of a Twins fan. And uh, he, uh, he had many of these, as do a lot of other people out there. And what, what do we do with these Homer hankies when we want to cheer on the Minnesota Twins? Anybody want to help me on this? Huh? Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's quite simple. It's not a trick, right? Go like this and wave this, right? It's like we're cheering them on. Go Twins! Go our favorite team! Go very important people! Go to give us everything that we want to be good, to make sure that we can have plenty of candy and a 10-speed bike and all the wonderful things of this world. We wave things like this. huh? And I want to tell you something. That's kind of the attitude that the people had. That was they were thinking that Jesus was going to do wonderful things. He was going to be the winner. He was going to be the one who gave them everything that they wanted. And he deserved their praise. Yeah? That's kind of how people were thinking on that Sunday that we label as Palm Sunday. But later on throughout the week, it was going to turn and become something but all that singing and praising and waving of palm branches. Later on in the week, the people were going to be disappointed with Jesus. And things are going to turn on the head of a dime. That's an expression that says that, that things turn quickly. From shouts of praise to shouts of, you ever see that up there in that cross? Shouts of crucify, crucify Jesus. Crucify him who claims to come as the Son of God. It's kind of confusing in a way. And frankly, I expect you to all understand it right now. But you will when you get a little older. And you will as mom and dad and grandpas and grandmas continue to share this story with you. Hmm? For today, for today, 
we sing praises and we love Jesus for all of the wonderful things he, is, he has done, will do, and continues to do. Palm Sunday. And we realize that all those wonderful things that Jesus did was on account of him doing something very sad, dying on our behalf and rising again from the dead. Well, yeah. Okay. So, let's pray, shall we? Gracious and loving God. We love you, Lord Jesus. Today we sing praise. Today we wave palm branches. But soon things will turn. We thank you for your love, which is never ending. Amen. Let me share one final thing here with these palm branches. We have plenty of palm branches, by the way. We made sure that we bought quite a few for everybody. Everybody can take home a palm branch. And what I want you to do with this palm branch is put it behind a special picture. You all have a special picture somewhere in your house? Maybe a special religious picture hmm? or a special picture of your family? Or maybe a special picture of a great grandpa or grandma or somebody in your family whom you love? You, you bet you do. And take this, take this palm branch, put it behind that picture, and leave it there for a long time. Leave it there for an entire year. What will happen is the palm branch will eventually get dry, very crusty. And then, we're going, and then we take that palm branch and we encourage everybody to bring it for the Ash Wednesday service next year in 2025. And guess what we're going to do with that very dry palm branch? Hmm? Anybody want to? Yeah? We're going to crunch it up and we're going to burn it. Yeah. Kind of fun to burn things, right? Okay. And we're going to burn it and it reminds us of our own mortality. Hmm? Kind of a sad thing again to remember, but it goes full circle, full circle. That, those are things that we call rituals and traditions, wonderful things. And I go on and on about rituals and traditions, but I've gone long enough. So I uh, remember to take this home and remind mom and dad to put it behind a special picture, a special cross somewhere in your home. Okay? All right. That's enough for now. Let's go back to your seats, okay? And we'll continue with the worship service. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Please rise. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Remain seated for me.
Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God even to the point of death. Following Christ's example, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion's story in Mark's Gospel presents Jesus as one who dies abandoned by all. He shows himself to be the true Son of God by giving his life for those who have forsaken him. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him out of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Where's Eleanor? Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You probably didn't wake up this morning needing to know how the phrase, a king's ransom, came into being, but I'm about to tell you anyway. 
The original King's Ransom harkens back to the Middle Ages in which King Richard I of England was captured as Britain was at war with both Germany and France. The German Emperor Henry VI threw King Richard I into prison and Henry VI declared he wouldn't let King Richard go until the people of England had raised the staggering sum of 150,000 marks. At today's price of silver, that would be around $17 million, or roughly one year's salary for a franchise quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> well, it was tough, but the ransom was raised. All over England, money was collected to buy King Richard out of prison. Taxes were increased by 25%. Gold and silver treasurers from cathedrals and abbeys were melted down. Young children chipped in with their allowances and school classrooms went without their milk money. And the money was raised. And King Richard I went free. And his return home has been celebrated as the final scene of every Robin Hood movie ever made ever since. But truthfully, King Richard had a proud and arrogant manner about him. There were many who thought if he was worthy of being liberated. And, it, and he rubbed too many people the wrong way. And shortly after Richard returned to England in February of 1194 AD, you can Google it if you want, he was replaced on the throne by his brother, John. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he too was hailed as a king. And like Richard I, he too was imprisoned. But that's about where the comparison ends. For Jesus, there was no ransom, neither asked for nor offered. The words which Julie just read from Mark chapter 15 comes scorching off the page. They hauled Jesus before the chief priests and scribes, and eventually before the Roman governor Pilate. Jesus did not cut a very kingly figure in Pilate's courtyard, no. They had stripped him and beaten him. The only crown he wore was woven from thorns. A king's ransom being collected free Jesus? Don't count on it. Pilate, being a practical sort of politician, saw no advantage in treating Jesus as a visiting head of state. Despite what the people had been calling him as he entered into the city, there had not been anyone willing or able to raise a king's ransom for Jesus. The governor might have taken a different approach, but this country rabbi who rode into town on a donkey had nothing. He was not worth negotiating for from Pilate's eyes. As far as Pilate was concerned, he was just a troublemaker, an insurrectionist. Pilate had learned to nip these Judean revolutionary movements in the bud to save his own head, to save his own hide. And so he offered the mob that cruel choice, Jesus or the bandit, Jesus or Barabbas. We know the story. It's well-worn in our Bibles. It's well-worn in our hearts. They chose Barabbas, and so do we. King Jesus went to the cross, no one there to liberate him. It had all looked so different just a few days before, or for that matter, just a few minutes before in this worship service, which we've come to know and understand as Palm, Palm Sunday. The sun was shining on that day. I believe it had to have been. The crowds were cheering. The people were running to catch a glimpse of he who had done so many wonderful things so many miraculous things, so many wonderful teachings, so many lives put back together by what he had to offer. And they were all clamoring to get a glimpse of him, to shout out, Hosanna, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna literally means, save us now, Lord. Get us out of this mess. Turn things around. Make things better. It's all summarized. It's all embodied in one special, beautiful word, Hosanna. Save us now. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. What was on Jesus' mind as he was on that donkey, as people were shouting the words of praise? He didn't stop them. He didn't contradict them. He didn't say, I'm not the king you're looking for, folks. Probably should have. No, he let the parade go on. <laughs> he does that for us as well. He received the cries of adulation. He let the people lay their cloaks down on the road before him, a gesture of deference offered only to those of the highest rank. We talked about it in the children's message. He let them go on waving the palm branches, a politically provocative act, mind you, because palm branches had been the symbol of the Maccabean rebellion a century before. Go ahead and Google that one, too. That revolt had succeeded for a brief time in throwing the foreign overlords, the Greeks, out of Jerusalem. But this demonstration at the city gate was clearly not a serious invasion of Roman-held territory. Or was it? Jesus had no army following behind him. He wore no olive wreath of victory on his brow. He wasn't riding a mighty war horse, nor steering a chariot, as you might expect a conquering hero to do. No, he was perched atop a donkey, like some country bumpkin. His feet, we can picture it, almost dragging along on the ground. And donkeys don't always go in a straight line, mind you. Sometimes they stop altogether digging their heels, have to be prodded along. Very likely there was laughter in the crowd as they watched the Nazarene rabbi make his zigzag way down the street. And yes, the donkey had to stop to do you know what, you know when. Jesus knew what he was doing. He was making it clear that he was no high and mighty general. He was a man of the people for the people who would die on behalf of the people. But who could see that? Who could see what he was doing? He was likely making fun of the powers that be. He was gently mocking them. No doubt there were informers in the crowd who had a more suspicious angle on what was being done on that particular Sunday. Word eventually filtered up the chain of command through the rumor mill to governor's palace. The name of Jesus of Nazareth would have been duly noted on the list of those with whom one better be aware of if one wears the Roman crown. And when the next day, this same Jesus caused a disturbance outside the temple, overturning the temples of the money changers and driving off the sacrificial beasts that were for sale, that would have been noted as well, especially by the temple authorities, who saw it as an act of bordering on, bordering on sacrilege. Jesus' rap sheet is beginning to expand as the people ever so graciously embrace him. Something would have to be done, and something soon. For Richard I, the people pay the king's ransom, even though the king really, in many respects, wasn't worth it. For Jesus, they do not. Quite the opposite. When he needs someone to step up and help him, no one does. Not even Peter, his closest friend. This is not the conquering king riding into the city in triumph. No, this is the suffering servant of which Julie just read so eloquently as well. 
He is the one who patterns himself off the famous servant songs of Isaiah, beginning in Isaiah chapter 40, if you want to read. One who sets his face like a flint, then lays down his life for his subjects. One who embodies all of the prophecy of which we are about to speak and talk later on this week. There is no ransom for Jesus. No one is willing to stand up on, on his behalf, but in a sense it doesn't matter. For God is with him. He is emptying himself on behalf of God and on behalf of you. What no one knows, not even Jesus' closest disciples, is that a king's ransom is being paid. It is being paid, but it's pay being paid in reverse. Not for him, but by him. The, one who is, who, the ones who are ransomed are you and me. We are the ones who need to be free. We are the ones who are captive. In all of our hatred, in all of our prejudice, in all of our misnaming, in all of our division, in all of our sinfulness, in all of our selfishness, in all of our greed, we are the ones who need to be ransomed. And he comes to set us free. Jesus, he comes to set you free. Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are the one who are receiving the king's ransom. How well Brother Martin Luther put it in the small catechism. You know, when the pastor doesn't know how to end the sermon, he always goes to the catechism. <laughs> <laughs> Article 2 of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from all eternity, true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. At great cost, he saved me, not with silver or gold, but with his holy, precious, innocent suffering and death so that I may be his own, live under him in his righteousness and purity forever and ever. Yeah. So let us wave our palms. Let us sing our hymns. Let us cheer his triumphal victory. And <laughs> we also let us shovel some snow. But let us also be aware that between the hosannas of Palm Sunday and the hallelujahs of Easter Sunday, there is an arrest, a flogging, and a trial, and a cross. Let us remember, and let us be grateful. Amen. Please rise for the singing of the hymn.
this week that we label as holy. We understand and realize it is holy not because of who we are, but because of what Christ has done. Along with the church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth, O Lord. We pray for the changing of seasons. We pray for all who live in the balance between snowstorms and spring's new life. Protect all who travel and water the earth with life and bring growth with each sunrise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments serve with integrity, justice, and compassion for all your people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and those who seek asylum while at the same time protect our borders from harm. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care. We pray for all who are ill, who are in need of healing, O Lord, that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians, and all who prepare for a very busy Holy Week. Bless baptismal candidates and their sponsors, confirmants and teachers. Watch over those who travel during this very special time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Blessed ones, blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. We ask your blessing upon all who grieve these days, particularly we pray for the family of Fred Fox, for Judith Davidson, and for Jim Hoppet, and for all of those whom we silently name in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on your journey, God of grace. Receive the prayers of your hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please move around to greet one another in the name of Christ. Be respectful for those who might not want to shake a hand due to virus. The offering will be received. Please be seated.
Please rise. Please join me in prayer. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us with these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look down upon you with favor in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close with our final hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living, hymn number 339. Hymn 339. Please be seated. Just a reminder, this is Holy Week. You should have known that by now, obviously. Uh, worship service this upcoming Thursday, the Good Friday, Monday Thursday, Holy Thursday, however you want to label it, 6.30, a wonderful opportunity to gather for worship. We have the traditional foot washing, which Jesus did in John chapter 13, 
Uh, if you have never been a part of that worship service, make it, make it, a, uh, make it a, a goal to attend that this, this year. And the Good Friday Tenebrae service, that is by far the lowest attended worship service I think we have in, in, during the year. I can certainly understand it because of its somber mood, but it is a wonderful experience to go through the seven last words of Christ. So, I challenge you to put that on your calendar as well. It is not too early to sign up for white elephant sales stuff. You can see that, the big poster there in the back. And uh, Ozzy, not everybody's going to make it to your birthday party downstairs later on here. So let us all, with one <clears throat> very good, rousing voice, 85 years young, let us sing happy birthday to this wonderful saint. Mm. Happy birthday to you. Is he here? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ozzy. Happy birthday to you. All right, very good. I'm going to grab my present right here. <clears throat> Go in peace, serve the Lord. Can you want to come with me? No? Huh? Yeah, there's mommy. Grab them there if you would. Good morning. Good morning.